Hello everyone, my name is Mariana. Um, I'm part of the encoding team at Netflix and I'm going to be talking about delivering better video encodes for legacy devices. Since Netflix started offering video streaming services back in 2007, the skill of the business has grown massively. We're now at around 193 million paid members all over the world. The global nature of our service translates into a huge diversity in streaming capable devices we support. These devices include phones, tablets, smart TVs, set-top boxes, and game consoles. To support all of these devices, we maintain a variety of encode families, each with its own settings, configurations, and codecs. In addition to the diversity in devices, there's also a large variability in our members' available bandwidth. Therefore, we need to be sensible of all these factors in order to provide more reliable and efficient encoding service. Over the years, our team has innovated in several aspects of our encoding pipeline. In order to improve the efficiency of our encoding, we've developed several optimization strategies. In 2015, we've launched per title encoding, in which an estimate of the complexity of the title is used to determine the title's bitrate ladder, replacing the fixed bitrate ladder over the catalog. A year later, we launched improved mobile encodes for downloads. These helped reduce file sizes for members with data caps. After that, we developed per shot encoding a more efficient optimization strategy, which is used for newer encode families. At the same time, how, we, how well we can improve the efficiency of our encodes depends on how well we can estimate video quality at scale. So for this purpose, in 2016, we developed an open source on own quality metric called VMAF. At the same time, we've also been uh, able to adopt newer and more powerful codecs with a focus on royalty-free standards such as VP9 and more recently AV1. Finally, in addition to improving our standard encodes, we also devote efforts in improving our premium content encodes, including 4K and HDR. So all of these innovations have very impactful um, improvements over the years and have allowed us to reduce our file size significantly. However, not all of our members have been able to benefit from these improvements if they stream Netflix using devices that are not compatible with the newer encode families. Um, there are multiple reasons why a device is not able to receive these improved encodes, and this includes not having the right decoder or profile support, hardware or memory limitations, and a lack of certification. For this reason, many members are served less efficient encode families, one of, of, of which being our per title encodes, which uses the widely supported H.264 AVC main profile. Therefore, depending on the market, our per title encodes still represent a substantial portion of view hours and traffic. So continuing to innovate and improve these encodes has a high potential for benefit to our delivery network and to our members. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about changes that we've made to our per title encodes, which are the streams we serve to the non these non-upgradable or legacy devices. So before starting this effort, we need to consider what our goals are. So our aim is to provide better encodes that are able to reduce our stream's bitrate, which translates into lower traffic. We also would like to reduce our stream's footprint, which is the total size of all the streams in the bitrate ladder of each title. And if possible, we would also uh, like to improve the quality of experience metrics um, some of them are uh, rebuffer rates, time to achieve a certain quality or a certain uh, minimum bit rate, among others. And all of this, of course, while keeping uh, the visual quality target as the same as our previous encodes and maintaining backward compatibility with all devices that are being served these streams, including more legacy devices. 
So having these goals in mind, we have made several changes towards improving our per title encodes. And I'm going to summarize uh, the three major changes that we've made. And I'm going to go a little bit more in detail on the next slides for each of the changes. First, um, we're now employing a VMAF um, quality metric, VMAF as a quality metric to for our uh, complexity based encoding. Second, we now allow per chunk bitrate variations instead of using a fixed per title average bitrate. And this is achieved by using a multi pass encode strategy. And finally, we also um, have improved our bitrate ladder and the tuning of our operating points. In terms of the first change we made, um, our per title encodes were actually productized before we developed VMAF, and therefore we're still using um, the previous quality metric um, that we employed, which was PSNR. And we know that VMAF shows a better, much better correlation with perceived quality compared to PSNR. So it's natural that if we're doing any changes to these encodes, we'd like to have VMAF um, drive our decisions instead of PSNR. And we have seen from our experiments that this alone provides some coding gains and also um, helps us reduce our footprint. Here's an illustration of um, why we're moving to VMAF. Uh, this is an example title from our catalog. On the left side, we can see uh, bitrate um, and PSNR, and on the right, bitrate and VMAF. Here we're showing um, a bitrate ladder composed of four resolutions and three rate points per resolution. And we're also plotting the convex hull over um, these points based on PSNR and based on VMAF. We can see that the convex hull points are the points that we actually want to stream since they are uh, the optimal for the rate and the selected distortion. We can see that on the left, um, some points are not in the PSNR convex hull, and on the right, uh, for VMAF, uh, other points are not on the convex hull. More specifically, the highest quality 720p point is not part of the PSNR convex hull, and but it's part of the VMAF convex hull. So this is uh, some changes that uh, we would we, we would see with this new um, quality metric. And since we're dealing with uh, artifacts that are based on compression and also scaling. We uh, trust VMAF to make a better decision since it, it was trained to account for both these artifacts. Um, so it's well suited for the adaptive streaming use case. In terms of uh, the second change that we made, our per title encodes uh, use a complexity based strategy to estimate the ideal average uh, per title bitrate. And then this per title bitrate is used for all chunks in the title. And we are now instead uh, modulating the average bitrate for each chunk, depending on its own complexity. And this strategy has already been applied to the mobile downloads. It allows us to have uh, an improved bitrate allocation, and it avoids over allocating bits on low complexity chunks. And if you consider uh, the same average bitrate, we can see that this allows for more consistent quality over the title's duration. So here we're showing an example of a title from our catalog and we're showing bitrate variation and quality variation for different chunks. And we're comparing two encodes, uh, one the improved encodes compared to the per title encodes at roughly the same bitrate. Um, and this bitrate is computed over the entire title and we can see that the per chunk bitrate for the per title encodes is, is constant um, on uh, the per title encodes and uh, we allow them to vary on the improved encodes. Sometimes they're lower than the average, sometimes they're higher than the average. In terms of quality, we can see that the uh, variation of the a per title encodes is higher than the variation of the improved encodes. So more specifically, if we look at the beginning of this title, we see that there's a quality drop um, in the per title encodes, 
which we don't have in the improved encodes. So allowing to have a higher bitrate on that beginning uh, makes uh, the quality more stable. In terms of absolute numbers, we can see that the average VMAF for these encodes is 91.2 for the improved encodes compared to 90.8 for the per title encodes and the standard deviation of the VMAF on the chunks is also reduced from 2.1 to 1.8. So this is just an illustration of the benefits of, the, of this strategy. If you consider uh, aggregate rate distortion performance, uh, we looked at a uh, bitrate over VMAF on um, a number of titles. In this case, we consider 200 titles from our catalog. And here we're aggregating rate distortion using uh, interpolation and also using uh, the median of the, of the bit rate you know, for the same quality. And we can see um, that we have improvements over the entire quality range. If we compute BD rate, our BD rate gains are around 6.5% over these 200 titles. If we only look at the top 10% of performance, which are the best titles in terms of the gains, we can see larger improvements uh, than on average. And we see larger improvements usually for titles that show a large variability in complexities. This could be a title that is very complex in the end, for example, and not complex in the beginning. So we would be over allocating bits in the beginning. Um, if we only look at these titles, the BD rate gain is now uh, around 16%. So the last thing that we did in terms of the major changes is to look at the overall bitrate ladder and assess if we can change anything about that. So we know that in adaptive streaming, not all qualities and bitrates in the ladder are streamed equally. So if you just look at the rate distortion performance, that doesn't tell you the whole picture about how your streams are actually going to be served to our members. And we know that a portion of our sessions are not bandwidth constrained. So what's en what ends up happening is that um, they stream at the top bitrate of the available resolution. And this resolution some is given by some limitations in device or sometimes in the account. So taking all this information in, we can make more informed and better decisions related to the operating points of the, our complexity analysis and to decide the, our final points in the bitrate ladder. In terms of testing, um, this is very important for any change, but it's also uh, very important for this change since the l number of devices that will be receiving these streams is huge, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning. Um, for us, A-B testing is crucial. It allows us not only to verify our offline analysis, it also allows us to get metrics that we cannot get otherwise if we just look at um, rate distortion performance. And um, important issue for this rollout is that it flags potential device issues. If we see that a device is having issues with the new streams compared to the old streams, we can go back and debug um, and understand if these issues are coming from the new changes or if there's other reasons for an increased error rate, for example. So A-B testing has improved at Netflix over the years, thanks to the amazing data science team. We now have more and improved metrics so that um, with any, every innovation that we do, we can have more confidence um, in the impact of our changes in the field. In terms of the estimated benefits of our changes, this is some, some of these results are reported by A-B testing. We can see that the average session bitrate has been reduced by over 20%. The average rebuffer rates per hour were also reduced uh, by around 10%. And we don't see uh, any uh, perceptual differences in terms of VMAF. And in terms of the footprint, which is our CDN storage, we can reduce our CDN storage by 20% uh, with these changes. So the estimated, we estimate that these traffic and footprint reductions will also have an impact 
on the entire delivery infrastructure. As we know, Netflix has our own CDN, which is called Open Connect. And the way that Open Connect works is that we store content and we store the whole catalog in our servers, um, in our IX sites, but we also store a portion of our catalog, which is usually the most popular content in cache servers, which are called the OCAs. And these are on the ISP sites much closer to our members. Um, and therefore, by reducing the footprint of our streams, we can also um, allocate more of that content from the catalog to our cache servers. So this change will allow also further improving our QoE by having more of that content closer to our members. And we also expect to have positive impact on the traffic of our IS partner ISP networks. And lastly, um, we expect our members to receive this reduction in bandwidth usage. Finally, uh, we're happy to say that we have now productized these changes and we have started producing these new encodes. At the same time, we are re-encoding a portion of a catalog so that we have these improved streams and more of our content. So if you are streaming Netflix on an old tablet or an old streaming stick, know that we are thinking about you and we expect to see, you can expect to see a reduction of your bandwidth usage soon. I also want to highlight that this is only one of many of our efforts to continue to improve our encoding and to provide the best possible viewing experiences for everyone. Thank you everyone, thank you so much for listening to my talk. Uh, many thanks to the awesome team back at the office. Just kidding, everyone's at home. <laughs> thanks to the encoding team, also thanks to the partner uh, teams and Media Cloud Engineering and data science and engineering. Just a small note that if you want to improve our encoding and if you're passionate about encoding, we are also hiring. So check out our website. Wow.